Hey everyone, my name is Lorenz. Today I'm going to show off an enterprise use case using Crew AI and Quadrant. In combination, we're going to create an agentic RAG application that extracts details from contracts, trying to find conflicts of interest or similarities across different contracts, and then also deploy that into production so you and your team can use even if they're not technical. So if that sounds interesting to you, let's go ahead and get started. There's a couple prerequisites for us to get started. You're going to need to create an account here on app.crewai.com. So all you have to do is start enterprise trial. It's completely for free. And then go to Quadrant and also create an account on the Quadrant uh, vector database so we could start uploading our contracts directly into here. So once you've done that, let's uh, go ahead to our code editor. All right, well, let's get coding. So we want to transform all of these contracts, right? So we have three contracts right now, which one is from a credit cards company to a cyber, Cybergy company, and then a digital cinema destinations corporation, right? These are kind of like legal contracts, right? Uh, so how do we pre-process them? Like before we use Docling, and we're going to also use Docling to we're able to transform the document, so these files, into something our LLMs can consume and generate vector embeddings into. So again, just upload or import document converter from Docling, and then we're going to set up our Quadrant client as well as our OpenAI uh, client. So we need OpenAI for the vector uh, embedding models, right? We're going to take that text that we convert from the documents into something that we could store into our Quadrant vector database. And the setup for the Quadrant client is to spin up our Quadrant vector store, which is going to be their cloud vector database. So again, you're going to be needing a couple things like getting a Quadrant key, but for the most part, we're going to extract the PDFs from this contract and then for each of those documents, we're going to convert them into a Docling uh, format that we can begin to chunk. So if I were to remove all of these pieces of code and just run this, what we're going to see is the vector embeddings of every single one of these uh, chunks of documents that we get. So if I were to run this Python code, right, what we're going to see is each particular chunk as well as all the points, which is like a list of numbers as a representation of the vectors, of the points, and then the, the chunk itself. So over here, we're seeing the chunks, which has each section um, of the contract. Boom, and that's done. And look at our points, right? Our points is this vector representation of each particular chunk that we've seen above. We go to over there, so now we can store that into our vector database. So we're going to rerun all of this, so now we could store this into our vector database, right? All you need is, you know, once you've instantiated your Quadrant client, you've provided it with your Quadrant URL and your Quadrant API key, you could just start to upsert. So we're going to create the collection if it doesn't already exist. This is a new one that I've created. So this doesn't exist yet. And we're going to begin to upsort the points that we've generated, right? This is the most important part that we want to store up there. So if we rerun this again, we're going to, again, pre-process, generate the chunks, and now store that into our vector database of the name, contracts, business, latest. And then if you go and you go over here, you're going to get something that looks like that. There's no latest contracts business over here. Once our contracts are generated into vector embeddings, we can then store that over here. So we go back, it's doing the work, and in just a couple seconds, we'll have our database loaded with our knowledge. Let's see if this loaded. Hopefully we get our, our latest. Nice. And let's see our points. So again, we have the representation of points into a vector store, right, which has the representation of this. Uh, we have some of the metadata that we retrieved from Docling, right, which is like the particular section of which this thing lives. And these are the things we want back, right? 
and this is the actual text. So pre-processing is, pre -processing is now done. Let's go ahead and start to build our agents, our tasks, and then a vector search tool that we could attach into our agent and then begin querying. So let's look at some of our agents that we're gonna make. We have a couple, three agents. Our first one is the data retrieval analysis specialist, which will extract contracts from a vector database based on a given query, right? It's gonna be using a quadrant vector search tool that we're going to just import. Then our second one is a source cider specialist, which is to identify each particular source of the contract that pertains to the question or query given by the user, right? So we want to source every specific thing, like where section does an end user need to go to find the evidence that the evidence of the answer. And we're going to package all of those together into a report that our end users can use. And again, these kind of map one to one in a sequential process for a crew. So our first agent will be doing the retrieve contracts task, which will retrieve contacts, contracts from a vector database using the quadrant vector search tool. Then we're going to have a sort cider, a source cider task, which will sort, which will cite the source of every single query that we get. And this is how we interpolate or add the queries. So anything that's in the curly brackets will get interpolated. So a query could be dynamic, like, oh, what was the conflicts of interest between these two contracts, right? And then finally, we're going to have a generate report task. And then I'm going to show you guys how you can bring the, all this in together using the quadrant vector search tool in the crewai.py file. And crew.py, boom. So let's define our agents. We're going to have three agents. Our first one is going to be the data retrieval analysis specialist, which will extract the contracts and the, the answers from our quadrant vector search tool based on a given query. Right? It has access to the quadrant vector search tool. And then we're going to have a source cider specialist, which will cite the answer based of the contract it's getting the answer from. Right? So this is kind of like evidence to prove the answer is correct, and also giving you the end user where it got the answer from. And then we're going to package all this into a report that our users can use uh, for a stakeholder meeting or things of that nature. And in a sequential crew process, typically what you see is a one-to-one -one relationship between a agent and a task. So our first agent is going to execute the retrieve contracts task which will retrieve the contracts from the vector database based on a given query. This query is dynamically generated by the end user. Uh, so this query can be something like, hey, find me uh, conflicts of interest between these two uh, contracts, or find me similarities of how a certain thing is done between these two contracts, or all these contracts. Right? Then our source cider task is going to provide pretty much like the evidence, right? A list of sources that contains the answers for a query We'll be using the sources to identify where the answer came from so our end users know where to verify the answer, saving them a lot of time having to navigate through a lot of these pages of this, you know, contract, right? Is it in section 8.1, 8.2, where is it? And then we're going to package this as a report that our end users can use uh, for a stakeholder. So let's put all this together into a group. And what we're going to do is we're going to, from Crew AI Tools, import the Quadrant Vector Search Tool. This is new. It's now added into the Crew AI Tools repository. So you could easily begin to use a vector search tool uh, like Quadrant, right? In just a couple lines of code, you have access to this. And you don't need to build this from scratch. All you need to do is attach your collection name, and then the Quadrant URL, and then the API key. And then to pass this into your agents, all you have to do is just define it on the tools, right? So we're passing all of our, all of these tools to all the agents that we have. So the three agents that we have is the data retrieval analysis, the source cider, and then the report generation specialist. And then we're going to be mapping the tasks one-to-one -to, -one to our agents, right? So the agents uh, and tasks are all defined here. And then we're gonna define and put all them together into a crew, right? So all of our agents, all of our tasks, and in the sequential process, what we see typically is a one-to-one -one mapping of these agents and tasks. So to execute this, we're going to kind of give it a query, like what are the differences in how contracts define warranties 
within these two companies or these two contracts, right? So the credit cards uh, .com Inc. is this contract. And then go to main. The digital cinema destination is this other one, right? So to run your crew, all you need to do is do create a run. And let's see what it gets us. And again, I'm defining the credit cards .com Inc. and digital cinema destination, but it's not the actual name of these things, right? It's kind of like a shorthand version of them. So a vector database is going to find relevant things like, hey, here's the contract name, right? This is the actual name of this contract. Here's the section, and then here's kind of like the content. And it's using this uh, on the first agent, which is the data retrieval analysis agent, right, that we have. Now we're going to be using a way to cite them. Where is it getting these informations from? Which is our second agent, right? Nice. It's coming from section 9.2. Um, the content is this. And here's now our report generation. So it's going to uh, give us the final answer for this, right? And if we look at our report that markdown file, we get something that looks like this. The report analyzed the disclaimer between the two clauses, between the two different affiliate agreements, and highlights the key similarities and differences for, for these contracts, right? And it's even giving us the, the, the sources. So if we go to digital cinema destinations, and let's go to 9.2 disclaimers, scroll all the way down, let's look for disclaimers, 9.2, we should see something called disclaimers, and we do. Nice. So this is kind of true. It's not hallucinating any of these facts. Creditcards.com, section 20. Let's go all the way down to section 20. And we see warranty disclaimers. Nice. So this pretty much looks good to me as a final report output. We have the sources of where it's coming from, the sections, and all of that. So again, pretty nice. So what are the next steps? This lives locally. Let's go ahead and deploy this into production. And there's two ways for you to do that. I'm going to show you how you can do it on app.crewai.com, but you could also run Crew AI to deploy. And I'm going to show you guys how you can do that over here. Just go to app.crewai.com, create an account, and I'll show you how to get that done over there. All right. So once you've signed up, all you need to do is connect to your GitHub account and then find the repo. So deploy it to GitHub, upload it to GitHub, choose your the name of the, the crew where you've uploaded it to, and then just upload a couple keys. So what we're going to need is our OpenAI key, we're going to need our Quadrant API key, and we're going to need our Quadrant um, URL right so from there once you've added your keys just go ahead and press deploy and you should be good to go all right all right all right so once your crew is deployed you can access it going to the manage tab you could trigger crews like in a kanban board right let's give it the same query that we gave it but like in the kanban board like any team you're technical, non-technical, you're kind of like seeing things that are pending, that are running, and then jobs that have been completed. So let's look at some of the stuff that's been done before, right? You have access to the query, how many tokens it cost, which, how many of them were prompt tokens, how many requests were made, right? Some just super high level like uh, metrics. Then here's our output, right? Which is kind of what we saw earlier, right? Here's kind of like terms of like payments, uh, but, but yeah, so once this is done, let's see this final output. So boom, uh, we have the query over here. How many tokens did it cost? How many requests were made? And look, let's look at our output. So nice. We got the section, we get the disclaimer, we get our answer, the finding, uh, and we get the sources, right? And that's exactly what we wanted. You could also look at your crews like this. Right, you have uh, sections of its executions. Right, we're able to see uh, what models were running it, what were the agents 
and, and task names, right? The final outputs of our agents and tasks. And these are pretty awesome ways of, you know, super high level um, metrics of how much this costs to make. Maybe this is something that takes a person illegal, you know, $100, $200 an hour to make. But in like, uh, you know, how long did this take? 34 seconds, we were able to give you or our end users an answer, right? So let's go back. So we can see metrics, how many tokens did, we, did it cost us to use, right? If we were to run tests, we could kind of like observe uh, quality of our crews over time, but we could see how much of the ex average execution times were our crews taking, and we can kind of track that as like return of investments. Uh, we could see uh, how many tools were being used. We could see quality vector search tool being the tool used the most. Uh, we could schedule this to run every, you know, every day or so. We could test and evaluate the performance of our crews. So if we were to run the same thing and we want to compare against GPT-40 or GPT-40 mini, we could see that. We could then train it using reinforcement learning with human feedback. We could monitor our deployments and roll back to them over time. We could set like, you know, uh, different, you know, our, these are our keys that are defined over here uh, and just the deployment logs over here. So once test is done, let's go ahead and, and see kind of like the results of what we get uh, and, and the measurements of them. And we got our results back. So let's see how our crew did. So we have kind of like nice uh, hallucination results saying, hey, we listed the, the two sources specifically. Each sources were defined specific to the documents that were referenced, right? Uh, and we got about, you know, a little bit lower of a score over here on our first task with GPT-40 mini, but the first task with GPT-40 actually did worse and it took, you know, around the same time, which is kind of interesting. And again, we use LLM as a judge for, for these metrics. Uh, but what we see at the end of it is the crew score of 8.25 with GPT-40 versus 7.67. So maybe we just want to use GPT-40 mini for this crew, right? Uh, and then you could observe the metrics over here, right? We've done a couple of tests now. Uh, we've kicked them off a couple of times. And here are kind of like what tools we use, the tasks themselves, how long did things run? What was the success rate? Did we hit any errors, right? How many errors were running? Uh, kind of high level observability all across the, around. So yeah, that's pretty much um, end to end, deploying, getting all the way to a place where you could start to have your crews deployed into production. And yeah, that's pretty much our end-to-end -end from local to production enterprise use case. So you could imagine this being used in legal and insurances and other kind of use cases that require processing of documents. So if you liked what you saw, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. And comment down what you guys want to see next. So hope that was valuable. Thanks you guys for watching and staying until the end. See you next time. Peace out. Bye-bye.